depression is depression is really killing people you understand i don't understand it doesn't matter who is going through because depression can take you any time and um, I'm a graduate. I have a bachelor's degree in communication and journalism from Kenya Methodist. I grew up very in a very, I would say, middle class family. I went to State House Primary, and then after that I went to Mary Hill. It was a national school. It's still a national school. I performed well. Um, yeah, I started school at State House Primary, and then after that I went to Mary Hill Girls. After Mary Hill, I, after graduating high school, I went to. I went to study abroad. I went to the U.S. University of Central Missouri, and then I came back home because I, I I couldn't finish my studies, so I came back home. I went through a lot, and I wish I could have done so much different or better. But it's not too late, and hopefully, like if they ever see this when they're older, they should know I didn't give up, and it was mainly because of them and I was also married to quite an older man and that's what brought um, a lot of controversy um, how, how, how old are you when you when you're married um, just about 18 oh, okay yeah you know you know you know you know you know you know you and this thing is dangerous. You know, uh, people don't get depressed. Most people don't get depressed because we live in the rural places. And uh, in an African home, the moment you get depressed, your mom will slap you. Only slap will, will do that. But now, but, but now we have the breed, this breed of kids brought up in, uh, in, in a, in a, in a town, uh, town nature, you understand? So, they live in the town, they went to school, like life was really soft for them, you understand? But they never faced some, some challenges that real, real uh, Kenyan kids face, you understand? When I traveled and lived in Russia, I never knew anything to do with depression. I never knew anything to do with depression. But at the moment, <coughs> the moment I felt, I started feeling strange, I started feeling useless, empty. Then I asked my friend, what's really going on? Because I don't feel like I want to I wanna live, I want to work, I want to I wanna go to school anymore. Like, I don't, I want to study even. Then he told me, my friend, you have a big problem. You have a big issue. And that's when I met different people, they tell me, bro, man, I'm depressed. So I didn't understand really means for someone to be depressed. I never understood this. I never understood how a normal person will get depressed. So <coughs> in two in in 2020 that's the point. That's the point I felt like the life was coming to an end. The life was short. I've just graduated. My visa is still. My visa is still. I don't know. My next, the next move, where I was supposed to go, which city I was supposed to go, because I had my application. My visa was already uh, wasn't ready by then. I didn't. My it, 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 it was like one month to go. I don't know where to go. My visa is about to expire. The same place i don't have a job because corona destroyed everything i don't have a job and in the to also to add on it too i don't have money and i was thinking i should move to another city i don't have money do 
Do I know anyone? I don't know anyone in that city. Stress. Stress. Thinking a lot. So, when I watch some videos, and I really felt it bad because some people, some people are undergoing, are going through a lot of things. Like these ladies here, or uh, like the lady here. I went to Kenya Methodist where I graduated with a bachelor's degree in communication and journalism. After that, I started out at, at People Daily. After People Daily, I worked for a year, maybe two years. And then I went to Standard Group. A standard group, I did well. I, I was then recruited to Nation Media Works for uh, five years. So after that experience, in 2020, I was then awarded uh, the presidential award. Um, I was given the presidential combination. I also, at that particular time, won the Times Reuters Foundation um, award. I have. In my career, I have, I think I did exemplary well throughout my career. Um, I was able to travel to a few places. I went to London. I went to a few countries here and there, Uganda, Tanzania, Burundi. Um, so in 2020, after I got that state commendation, I was diagnosed with depression. So having been diagnosed with depression, I was admitted at Bustani in 2020. And then I was put on medication for depression, anti-anxiety, antidepressants. Um, then I coped with the medication. After a year again, I was admitted. And then the third time after being admitted, with depression, people don't know. It's people say you you just uh, you got depressed. What does that mean? So it took a, a bit of struggle with work and everything. People used to think ah nikujia kele atu. So. Having been depressed, I turned to alcohol, and alcohol and medication do not work. So I, was, I, I used alcohol as a tool now instead of focusing on the medication. Imagine from being a top, from living a five-star life, to the street. And another lady here also, from being a socialite at an early age of 16 she was popular rich but do you know what happened drugs and and this was before you got to showbiz this was before this was before because um okay me i've always been a wild child you know so i left home quite early at an early age we were around 16 17 and uh <clears throat> that's where i met this guy and uh, obviously in Nairobi, in Nairobi yeah. I ran away a couple of times. Yamushaili in Pata Nairobi. So this is where I met my first husband, and um, he was even older than my dad, to say the truth. But like that freedom of just being away from home and the city life, you know, it, it really captured me. And so. Where where on a Wednesday, my childikwaje. Uh, for me, I, I found it like at my age at that time, I found it very glamorous, you and know. How, how old was he at that time? He was like in his 60s. Oh, yeah, like I said, he was older than my dad, yeah. Drugs drag her down. And sometimes people undergo difficult situations because they don't have someone to talk to or someone to look at. Like this guy, he was living with a lady, you know the lady that was rescued, was who was living a five star. Now, they left him on the street, no one to take care of. And also you come to understand how this world is so biased that they favor women, but they don't take care of Man, as a woman, just cry for help. People will help you very fast. And as a man, you remember that you are always on your own. And this is the time where you, you find out that you have a good job, you're working, you're somewhere cool. You don't, re you don't take into consideration that a man only lives his own life. A man is always a loner. 
so you forget so you forget everything you start to you get into a life that you really want to please other people so at the end of the day things goes when things goes uh, haywire then you don't see the friends who are going to help you you will much closer to you so you don't need any help no not that i don't need any, any help i just want to do it on my own i want to be i'm very independent minded that's how i i was raised to be very independent asking for help is very hard for me yeah challenges me journey with this wow there's no steam there's no electricity there's no power and then of course you've seen where i stay the nini the area is ridden with water so you expect mosquitoes you know it's 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 i don't think it's it's not it's not easy but you cope with what you have